My name is Phyllis Wong. Uh, I live in Oakland, California, which is part of San Francisco Bay Area um, in the United States. And I know about Red Work because I work for Evolve, which is a optimization company. Um, and I'm a software engineer and a solution architect with the team. And we partner with Red Work uh, a lot. Actually, my career had like a kind of lot of different trajectories. Um, the job that I had previous to software engineering was a high school teacher. Uh, I taught digital media, graphic arts, um, visual arts, and drawing and painting. Um, and I really enjoyed that work. Um, but uh, the education system in the United States is losing a lot of funding and the arts are getting cut um, left and right. And it was really challenging to continue on that career path. Plus, um, uh, educators don't make enough money to live in the San Francisco Bay Area. So I realized that I needed to do something to modernize my skills and be able to continue to live in my home hometown. So um, I decided, because I do graphic design, um, that uh, coding up websites and developing websites would be a really good transition for me. And so I went to a coding program, which was a two year accelerated uh, CS degree program. Um, and when I finished with that, I got my first internship with Evolve. Um, it converted to a full time role and I'm still here a year and a half later. I think it's really important. Um, one of the big reasons I think it's important is because when we have just a very small subset of the global population creating all of the software uh, that the whole world uses, it doesn't tend to solve the problems that it thinks it's solving. Um, and software is, is designed, I think, to solve problems, or should be. Um, and when we have women in tech, we get another perspective um, and we can say, hey, you know, uh, I'll use an example of pockets in pants. Um, women's pants don't have pockets or the pockets don't hold anything. Um, and I think the assumption when pants are designed is that women carry purses and so they don't need pockets. Um, but we as women, we know this is not true. We need st somewhere to put things and we don't always want to carry a purse. Um, and it's just a very short, narrow perspective to say that oh, women just don't need it. Um, so when you have a woman involved in making we can say actually that's not true we do need this thing um, and so let's think about this as we're developing the software to answer this problem you think it, only these people share this issue but also these people share this issue too so let's make sure that the software is like holistically working for everyone yeah I'm gonna go all the way back to, to Ada Lovelace Ada Lovelace was like the first um, uh, computer programmer um, and she was back in the days when computer programs were punch cards, you know, and back then it was thought of as programmers were was a woman's job. It was more like secretary work because they had to write the punch cards and stand there and feed it into the big giant computers. Um, but she pushed things forward and, and made the technology um, to the next level. And I think she inspired programming in general, not just women. Um, in technology and she saw herself as somebody who could make a big contribution and even though she was stopped along the way or people tried to stop her along the way because of, she, of her being a woman she didn't listen and she didn't she didn't allow that to be a blocker for her she just continued to push forward and so to me that's really inspiring like women back then in those days making big changes no matter what they faced is really inspiring Uh, for one, it, it pays pretty well. <laughs> it's a pretty secure job. Um, a lot of companies need people who understand how to work technology so that career opportunities are vast. Um, and, you know, uh, you know, women aren't just sitting at home raising families, you know, women are working. Um, and so we see this as a, as a place for us to actually make a, a really good salary and contribute is one avenue. The other avenue is that I think a lot of companies are realizing that they need more women technologists and are 
shifting and shaping the academic landscape and, and going to schools and saying, hey, we're looking for women, you know, how many women interns do you have that you, you can send from your school? And the schools are like, oh, I guess we need to make sure we have more women. And so um, recruiters to the programs are actively seeking women and, and making sure that women feel like they can come and, and join, you know, the, the academic pathway, um, all the way from middle school to high school to college. And then, and I think it started at the, the company level, uh, maybe 10 years ago, that shift started happened. And we're just now starting to see the results of that, like going to middle schools and high schools and, and get, saying, hey, women, you can do this. this. Let's get you trained up and give you the academics you need and the skill sets. And we're, we're just going to continue to see that. And I hope, I hope one day it's it's 50 50 in all industries um but mm -hmm. who knows? uh no i think that we need to continue to to start at the very youngest ages of of young girls you know from kindergarten first grade second grade um seeing when little girls have the aptitude for mathematics and logical reasoning and have an interest in technology and science and, and saying, hey, let's, let's actually shape that. Let's make sure that they have the same opportunities. Um, and then also we have to educate our male counterparts and say, hey, women can do this. Um, women should be allowed here uh, and train them how to work with women as well. I think that the number one greatest personality trait that's led me to be successful is resiliency <laughs> because software changes so fast and you can be going down a path working on something and the next day you got to throw it out the window and do something completely different and you have to ramp up really fast. Um, so you can't be married to your work. You have to, you have to be like, all right, I did this work and I'm just going to put it over here now. And whether you get to keep it going or, or not, um, you can't be tied like your own personal view of your success can't be tied to the success of that particular piece of work um, because it could change like that. Um, and so being really resilient um, and getting a lot of feedback and being open to hearing a lot of corrective feedback about your work. Um, and that also takes resiliency, but like you're gonna get code reviews and somebody's gonna tear it apart and pick out everything that's wrong, but you should want somebody to find it because if you don't find it and you put it out there and the customer's experiencing a broken thing that you shipped, uh, that's worse. So you sort of have to like go, all right, tell me everything that's wrong now so I can fix it. <laughs> um, and that takes resiliency. So being able to bounce back from from those truths and not not take it personal I think is really important in software um, and then the skill that I think is really important is being able to google well <laughs> knowing the vocabulary so you can figure out what you're trying to find um, so if you don't have the right vocabulary it doesn't matter how technically proficient you are Everything changes, you can't remember everything. Thankfully, we have this giant search space called the internet where almost everything lives. You just have to figure out how to find the needle in the haystack. Um, so the best skill you can have is, is Googling. <laughs> I would say it's hard. It's really, really hard. It's really hard for everyone. Even when you look at somebody and it seems like it was so easy for them it's still hard they probably have just been doing it longer and have learned how to not let the difficulty of it stress them out um, so if you feel like it's hard and you think that maybe you're not good enough because it's hard don't believe yourself it's it's really hard push through you'll get you'll get through it um, you're highly skilled keep pushing